welcome. This is a, a talk about uh, embedding Eclipse Sirius into a pure E4 application. It's mainly the reason I was able to come here all the way from Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, so I am really enjoying seeing this beautiful country and having a great time so far. Uh, about me, uh, I'm the chief techno ah, what do we call it? Chief technical officer at uh, Cohesion Force. I've been doing that job for about three years. I was there two years before that. Um, we've been developing applications for Eclipse since 2009, and uh, my specialty is something I like to call horizontal integration. I like to find technologies in different types of areas and tie them together and see what we can do with uh, creating new products. You can find me online, email, uh, I'm active on Twitter. Uh, so that's always fun. So about Cohesion Force, uh, you can read our little tagline, what it says up there. We do cool stuff and we help people solve problems uh, that are difficult to solve. Uh, the main thing that I like about what we do, uh, we believe that disciplined engineering should be easy. We believe that systems should be fulfilling to use. And we believe that we need better tools to solve the problems of tomorrow. And Eclipse is basically where we find these better tools. Uh, this, the, if you are a committer, if you are a developer, a contributor to the Eclipse, I'd like to say thank you. Because we use a lot of the things that you guys uh, put together. So, as a summary, uh, you ever wondered what it would take to get an Eclipse Sirius diagram into an E4 uh, application? Uh, so, we, we tried. Uh, we have a fairly large Eclipse 4 application that we use with one of our clients, uh, and we were doing a communications model where I had a uh, bit error rate, <clears throat> you know, probability of a message being dropped, things like that for a large, uh, a large network, which really lends itself to doing a, a diagram. Uh, so went to look and see, okay, I did a diagram with Sirius. It was great. It took about a day. <laughs> then I had an application where I could do all of this stuff. Uh, but I couldn't use it in my Eclipse 4 application. So that's what drove us down this, uh, uh, this crazy, crazy adventure. So some definitions. Uh, by Eclipse 4, what I mean is that there is no uh, available Eclipse 4 workbench. Uh, you don't have the help. You don't have uh, basically anything using platform UI is going to return a workbench not set up. I can't remember what the actual, there's, there's a magic error phrase that you get every time you, you try to run. You may have run into that before trying to use something like a properties view in an Eclipse 4 application. Uh, by diagram editor, this involves a mostly working diagram editor. Uh, haven't gone through the entire set of features and functions that you can do with that. So uh, there's that. This is basically the architecture as I understand it. This may not be correct because I'm no expert at Sirius or GMF or GEF. You know, I just touch a lot of things. Uh, you have dependencies walking downward towards SWT, and then over on the right, I have the Eclipse workbench where you have things tying over to the workbench. So, uh, so what we decided to do was try to break the lines going to the right leaving the dependencies going downward. So, our first idea, GEF4. Uh, that bottom dependency was GEF, Graphical Editing Framework. Uh, they've got a new GEF4, so we were looking at uh, what if we replace GEF with GEF4. There's a, a piece in there that uses JavaFX and does some interesting things. It's it's the new the new way to go, all of that type of stuff. And I've done a little bit of Java FX, so no worries, right? Uh, well, no. Uh, we may try again in the future. Uh, one of the issues we had was that there were some significant API changes between the legacy GEF and the new GEF, and there was one place specifically. There's an interface the diagram uses 
that was split into two separate interfaces, and I didn't have enough knowledge to know when I should use one interface versus the other interface. So, yeah, get reset hard and start over. So, it happens. Uh, it's it'll happen a lot if you do kind of the things that I do. Uh, so, finally started making some progress. We went back and started with the uh, GEF legacy repository, did a grep for, or control H, whichever you prefer, uh, for platform UI, and then basically everything that used platform UI, we had to uh, modify in some way. So, uh, the good news, GEF, I only had to modify 12 files. It was not as hard as I thought it was going to be. So uh, one of the main issues was the shared images. Uh, if you do the uh, platform UI dot get workbench returns null. Actually, if you don't have it set up, it throws that big error exception and then returns null. So uh, that's fun. And if you can imagine, uh, th you'll see this a lot through some of the uh, some of the code. A lot of it is based off of similar examples. Uh, if you pull the slides later, this link to the article is from 2001. That was one of the first things that pops up when you Google Eclipse shared images. You know, so obviously we do things a little differently now. Uh, but stringing together that many function calls without ever assuming something could be null, uh, <laughs> please don't do that. Uh, so we got GEF to work. Nice, yeah. So. It feels like if you if you've ever done this before, you get into you get into this and you start working and you you we've already lost a day by having to do a git reset and you know you feel bad and then you find it so pick something that you can you know something easy maybe an hour and get it to work. You want my picture with a smiley face or do you want to? Oh, I thought <laughs> Yeah, you missed the frowny face. <laughs> You're welcome. So, uh, yeah, and then came GMF. Uh, GMF is a lot larger than the GEF. Uh, that's that other graphical modeling framework. Uh, it's rather involved, complicated. I'm not sure which, which word to use there. But uh, that's why a GMF, you have other, other technologies like graffiti that may sit on top of GMF, and you use graffiti to generate the stuff that GMF uses. You know, it's just crazy. But... Uh, so I saw this and I looked for platform UI. I almost gave up. Uh, there were a few hundred places, and I'm, you know, just trying to get something to work. Uh, and then after I started correcting one thing, and then the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, I hit, oh, this is shared images. I know how to do that. And then you get the, oh, this is the display. I know how to fix that. Or oh, this is getting access to the shell. I know how to do, you know. So you wind up with uh, about seven different major areas on things that had to be updated. Uh, we'll step through each of these uh, fairly quickly. Uh, images we've already uh, talked about. Well, no, we didn't talk about that. Uh, so the images, I would either comment them out all together or uh, find a way to use the JFace, which also, if you can use JFace instead of some of the stuff in the workbench, it makes it a little easier, it's a little more uh, modular. Uh, JFace includes things like image registry, uh, I think there's other, some other kinds of registries you can use for fonts maybe, some other things like that. Uh, and then help, there's a lot of help in, included in GMF, which is great if you have a help system, uh, Eclipse 4, Unless you write one, it does not have one. So I commented out all the help. So there is no help, <laughs> uh, which is how I felt at the time. Uh, display, we just changed all of those. It was going through the workbench to get the display. Uh, actually, workbench, active workbench window, get display. I mean, you know, one of these other long function chains. Uh, so that was rather easy to go to uh, the display. Oh, part selection, selection service, part service, what's the active part, what's the active selection. I commented all of that out, and I still can't believe some of this stuff actually works. Uh, again, I don't know how much is, uh, is active or how, how many things, because GMF is, rather, is, is not 
it's been around for a while. So there are more than likely areas in GMF that aren't used as much by Sirius, or, or maybe I just uh, missed something. And then uh, the shell was a lot easier as well. Uh, very similar to the display. Get the display, get the shell for the display. Uh, and then logging. There was also a lot of logging. Uh, through the bundle, uh, what would you say, the activator of the bundle would typically extend abstract UI plugin which extends plugin, which provides a git log method that then you can call log on. And of course, most of the places that had that were, again, four or five functions all strung to, you know, anyway. Uh, so I, I simply removed those. Uh, there may be a way to flip that and use SLF or J or something similar uh, in the back end without having to, to go through this. Uh, we'll talk about some of that uh, as well. So almost there. So we've covered GEF and GMF, and then we get to serious. So getting serious, uh, it was a lot cleaner. Uh, it seemed, as far as the serious baseline, uh, things were packaged fairly, fairly uh, standard. So if you saw something in one place, you could imagine that the next item, the next, the next set of bundles you go through, the serious code base, were similar to what you had been through before. Uh, which is different from other large software projects I have ingested. Sometimes you go to one and it's, well, these classes are laid out this way, and then you go to the next bundle that was pulled in, and they're totally different. And, but Sirius uh, is a lot better than that. Uh, mostly the problem I ran into with Sirius was uh, trying to get uh, the active page. You know, as you can imagine, you've got a properties view, you've got a diagram, you have the palette, you may have other things you're dragging and selecting and updating properties and, and things like that. Uh, so, uh, one of the things we did, uh, okay, we'll get to that, sorry. So, more serious. So, to get it off the ground, I actually had to implement a class that extends or that implements the uh, the i editor interface. I had to create a class that implements the i what was it i workbench interface, and then find all the places that had been called and uh, turn around, grab the e4 service and repack it. You know you can get the act you can get the uh, the e4 services like the part service, the model service, the selection service. So they're available, they're just packaged differently. You wind up getting them injected somehow. So uh, wound up doing that. And so now we need an application. So uh, one of the applications that I saw at EclipseCon North America was Melanie with Abeo, uh, with an Arduino uh, designer, uh, hoping or, or working uh, to help kids get involved. So if you want to design an Arduino, you pick your uh, your board and you pick your sensors and you pick your modules and you wire them all together and then you can generate stuff and uh, and it, it's a great idea. It's also if you want to learn Sirius, it's a good way to look through a realistic uh, you know setup rather than there's a basic family that's in the Sirius 15 minutes you know which is great if you want to help people with family trees I guess. Uh, this was actually a more realistic uh, use case of it. So uh, the issues that I ran into uh, with with this with this uh, application uh, were due directly to workbench type things. Uh, when you create a new model, it would go create a new I project and then create resources in the I project using platform resource URIs. You know, and I didn't. I don't have a workbench. I don't have projects. I don't have you know any of this. So uh, wound up having to switch that over to using direct file URIs, uh, and we can walk through some of this code uh, in a minute. So uh, oh, I guess we can walk through some of this code now. Up oh, failure to download extra files. I don't know what that means. So you guys can see this. Uh, so first we'll walk through uh, the Arduino uh, designer from Melanie. Not write this, I don't want to seem like I'm taking any credit for this. Uh, so uh, what this does, it loads up a uh, customized 
uh, I'm not sure what version of, uh, it's actually running Neon as far as the target, uh, the target platform. So it comes up and you've got, uh, you know, you've got your, you know, your boards, uh, you've got your uh, modules. I can go, you know, take a new, a new module, drop it over here, and it asks me which one I want to pick. You know, you can do, you know, and then you can wire this up to, uh, you know, things like this. So that is the basic application. This is, uh, this is what Melanie had, uh, had created. So what I did was uh, I walked through some of the code <clears throat> behind the scenes uh, in the project. And so uh, what I did was create an E4 application. It's just a simple trimmed window with one part stack that has three parts. Uh, all three parts are exactly the same uh, except for the, the label. And then uh, in, the, in the part diagram, not sure how well you can see some of this. Let me move this. So most of the code happens in the post construct. Uh, some of these classes, I have really no idea what they do. I just know that they were uh, called uh, in the back end of the uh, serious application. So I pulled them out of where they were in the workbench and uh, dropped them in here. So we're loading, uh, we're loading up the uh, representation, the, AI, the AIRD, uh, this model, Arduino, is based on the, the EMF model. And uh, we're using the same, uh, the same registry. Uh, here's the viewpoints to activate. Uh, and that, uh, that is all still done through the uh, plugin.xml that's included in the, in the bundles that came from that uh, Arduino designer. So I didn't have to do anything different. So if there are, if you already have uh, O design files uh, in your in your projects that are registered through your plugin XML, this picks those up the same way uh, they were done before. Uh, so uh, and that actually happens here. Uh, this dialect uh, manager will go find all the plugins uh, that are registered and and do that. Uh, this diagram editor impl. Is a uh, that is an internal serious class. It's not API, so I don't know how long this will work, but uh, it does for now. And then uh, much of the stuff that that we're doing, as far as uh, getting custom data services and stuff, that is a direct copy out of one of the classes that we'd found in one of the uh, serious pieces. And then we're getting the editor name, the final methods. These are general, uh, your uh, I editor, I editor part, the init method, and then the create part control. All we're doing is creating the I editor part uh, manually. Uh, and then in our E4 uh, part control, we get a composite. It's a parent, and we just pass that along to the, to the other piece that we're going we're gonna to capture. So then if you want to see that run... Hope this works. There we go. And you can grab, uh, you know, the same types of things. Uh, platform, drop that in. It asks you what kind of platform you have. And you can add that in. You can uh, the same way with the modules work. You can wire, you know, wire things together and such. Uh, and then you can go to another another part. You could do something similar. Uh, and then, of course, being the uh, E four uh, application with the modeled workbench, I can actually drag things out into new windows. Uh, if you're in a model base, you, you can actually grab this and, and do modifications uh, in code. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so if you've ever had issues uh, running in the workbench and needed maybe, maybe you want a diagram, you got two monitors, maybe you want this diagram to go full screen on the monitor over there, and you want to, but you want it to still be connected to your 
French. It's a little difficult with the old way. So that is uh, what I've got so far. Uh, this blue bar across the top, uh, that is where a toolbar should be. And I have not figured out why it doesn't work yet, but I painted it blue just to know where it was to make sure it's, it's there. It's just something is, you know, so. Uh, and of course, all of this will be posted up on GitHub, so if you want to find out why that toolbar doesn't show up, please uh, uh, fork that and give me a pull request. So that was the demo section. Now I get to go back to full screen and fast forward to where we are. All right. So, uh, future work. So now we have a kind of running E4 application with series, which is great. We also have really packed up a GMF uh, repository with a lot of code and a GEF repository with a little bit of code. And so every time they make changes and push a new update, we have to open their update and see if we change that section of code or is it, did they move code? That's the worst thing is when they when things move. So given the file difference, it's the function moved somewhere and you got to go find it. Uh, so it's mm, probably a bad idea. Uh, so actually right now we have decided that until we, we get some solutions to this, right now we have an E4 application running all of our typical stuff. I also have 3.7 uh, or whatever the, you know, an old workbench application separately and had to cobble together some ways to get information from this workbench over to the application and from the application. And it's, it's not nice, but it's better than maintaining two separate baselines and, you know, and the staff that's required for that. So I am looking for a more reasonable way to solve this. Uh, some of the things such as the help system or the logging or check for null, you know, things like that, could possibly be done and pushed in so that if there's, you know, uh, a, a better way to handle some errors, uh, that might work. Uh, the option that I thought of is actually taking the workbench, the pieces that use the platform UI, and the actual, there's several other internal workbench classes that require setup to get them off the ground. I've considered taking the platform bundle, split the UI part from out as a fragment or something so that you can have a standard workbench. You may also have a version of it for E4 that just implements pieces of the interface that you need. Um, so that's there. That, that's a thought. I don't know if that would be uh, workable or how much, how much effort that would be. Uh, again, we're, we are actively looking for ideas and ways to, to do this. So if you have any, uh, please let us know. Uh, we have already migrated some, some views uh, in E4. This was done probably two or three years ago when we moved from, I think, Juno to Kepler. But, uh, wow, that would have been more than two years ago. Anyway. Uh, so things like the properties view, the uh, progress view, uh, several of the uh, dialogues, uh, there's like a element selection dialogue, things like that. We've already migrated, uh, you can see the GitHub there where we have that. Uh, it's in use in production for about three years now. Uh, the production right now is only using the progress view uh, hooked in with the jobs that, that get run. So that's that. So again, your option here. Uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, about to open it up for questions, but uh, the, that's the main reason for this talk is to find smart people and find people that do this type of thing and see, you know, I've obviously done some crazy uh, code ninja skills to just hack things apart. Uh, so hopefully that gives you some idea of the amount of work required and things like that. So uh, any questions? Any cries of heresy? Yes?
No. No. I did this maybe a month ago. So that's one of the reasons I'm here is trying to find the people that, uh, you know, the. I, I, I may do that with the Jeff team and get this and say, hey, here's what we're, here's, <laughs> they would, they'd probably be surprised at some of the things I've done, but, but. Right. Uh, the stuff I've done took, if I worked straight through, probably a week and a half. Uh, figure two weeks, depending on whether you get to it. The, some of the things are rather tricky. It's not a lot of code. You just have to know which code. You know, like pulling some of the serious pieces and which, which ones to pull and what order that they happen. And so... Uh, a lot of it was run the old one with the debugger and step through and see how things work and then figure out which pieces you knew, need in the new one. But uh, Also, I'll, the, the GMF and the GEF that I've already modified, I will also post to GitHub. So uh, please don't put those in your products. <laughs> you know, but it is a good, uh, a good thing. Also, uh, every... Let me... Before you do, anyway... Before I leave the presentation, please evaluate the session afterwards and uh, leave feedback. I'm always looking for uh, things, that, words that may not translate or things like that. Uh, so to get back over to uh, this, come on. Everywhere that I had made a change in the GEF or the GMF, <clears throat> I tagged with a fix me and the type of error that it was. So uh, if after these get pushed up to GitHub, uh, you can pull them and look at the task list and see every basically all the places that I had to make changes to, to get this to work, uh, which also may be useful for the Jeff team or the GMF team to go say, hey, here's the amount of, you know. So GMF wound up being 76 files I had to change. Uh, the GEF, Jeff, was uh, 12. Uh, Sirius was, I think, 11. You know, so it, it, after I figured out what I was doing, which took a while, it got a lot easier, and, you know, and you pick up speed, and you're making progress, and you feel great, and then you run into the one thing, and it blows up, and then you're like, oh, no. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, any other questions? Everyone ready for co more coffee? All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much for, for coming.